was a fine morning in New York City, a lovely day. The sun was out and the sky was clear. It was September the 11th, 2001, and no one expected the most damaging terrorist attack in our nation's history. Neighborhoods Today dedicates this program as a memorial to the men and women who died at the World Trade Center, the Pentagon, and in an open field just southeast of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. These are painful images, just as the images of the bombing on Pearl Harbor, December the 7th, 1941, are painful. But we honor our dead by telling the story of their struggle and their courage. We are just currently getting a look at the World Trade Center. We have something that has happened here, flame and an awful lot of smoke from one of the towers. Whatever has occurred has just occurred uh, within, uh, within minutes, and uh, we are trying to determine exactly what that is. Flames are shooting out. Smoke is pouring out. I want you to see what's happening. There are fire crews just screaming into this area from every conceivable direction. Towers of the World Trade Center have been hit by aircraft. Both are in flames. There is uh, black smoke coming from both of the towers. Uh, it's uh, a horrific scene here. There's um, debris flying through the air. There were two planes. I saw the second one hit. It hit the other tower. The two aircraft, aircraft. Two aircraft. The aircraft. first one on one World Trade Center. The second one just happened. We saw it. We saw it. We saw a plane going into the building. A plane went straight into the building. Right there, into the side. Yes, that was a plane. Yeah, that was a direct hit. Huge one. That was a The FBI is now investigating reports of a plane hijacking before these crashes we're telling you about at the World Trade Center towers this morning. Just get out of here, just go. This is evidence. 
at you kicking stuff. I'm out of it. We're just getting word now. One of the two planes was hijacked after takeoff from Boston. This is two airplanes have crashed into the World Trade Center in an apparent terrorist attack on our country. We now have reports of a fire at the Pentagon. Fire at the Pentagon being reported this morning. A situation that uh, started bad just gets worse and worse and worse. The World Trade Center, South Tower, which was hit by a plane and wrecked by an explosion approximately an hour ago, has totally collapsed. What happened? <laughs> Just joining us this morning, uh, here for a, a horrific surprise. The scene here is just one right out of one of those movies you would see in Hollywood. People walking around with uh, cell phones and tears, uh, holding their heads, looking up at what's left of the World Trade Center, just shaking their heads in disbelief. Out on the street, everyone knew what just happened. The South Tower was gone. They saw it collapse and ran. You have ammo straight down. Thanks of course, uh, there's no word on casualties. You have ammo straight down. But suffice to say, the uh, loss of life, uh, presumably profound. Ammo straight down. Ammo straight down. Hurrah! Of course, at this point, everyone's concern is just getting north, getting away from the World Trade Center, as well as finding out where their families are. The South Tower of the World Trade Center just minutes ago collapsed to the ground. Only one tower is standing at this point. I have a direct line of sight to what is left of the World Trade Center. The fire continues to burn. I can see the flames through the thick smoke. For months after the tragedy, the New York firefighters fought to put out the longest commercial fire in history. Fire was everywhere. It went 160 feet below street level and spread over an area of 17 acres. Firefighters worked round-the-clock shifts trying to stop this blaze and all the time looking for their fallen comrades. Some of the pictures you have seen were photographed by the New York City Fire Department just moments after the terrorist attack. Some of the pictures are not clear because of the smoke and the dust. September the 11th produced an extraordinary number of heroes. The dictionary says a hero is any person admired, 
for courage, nobility, and exploits, especially in war. There were people that day risking their lives by helping others escape from the collapsing towers, and others who lost their lives trying to save lives. One outstanding image of sheer bravery was that of Father Michael Judge, the fire department chaplain killed while giving the last rites to a fellow fireman. There were many heroes that day, ordinary men and women doing extraordinary things. And some of those courageous stories we will never know. And now Sister Mary Bieta, choir director of St. Thomas More Church, being part of our dedication today, will sing again for us, The Wind Beneath My Wings. It must have been cold there in my shadow To never have sunlight on your face You've been content to let me shine You always walked a step behind While you were the ones with all the strength Only a face without a name I never once heard you complain Did you ever know that you're my hero? It might have appeared to go unnoticed But I've got it all here in my heart I want you to know I know the truth I would be nothing without you Close to 3,000 heroes lost their lives that day. In honor of those heroes, Martin O'Reilly of the New York City Transit Police will perform Amazing Grace.
Shortly after our national tragedy, one could see our flag being flown more and more. The flag was flying from overpasses, from windows, from cars, from trucks, bridges, buildings. Our flag was printed on stick-ons, on t-shirts, and on coffee cups. Not only in New York City, but throughout the country. We came together as a family, weeping and praying for our lost relatives and friends. Our flag was the symbol of our solidarity. From coast to coast, it took on, again, its true meaning of one nation, indivisible. We are pleased to have retired New York police officer Ed Deasy sing The Impossible Dream. Dream to fight the unbeatable foe, to bear with unbearable sorrow, to run where the brave do not go. from afar to try when your arms are too weary to reach the unreachable star this is my quest to follow that star no matter how hopeless no matter how far to fight for the right without question or force to be willing to march into hell for that heavenly cause and I know if I'll only be true to this glorious quest that my heart will lie peaceful and calm when I'm laid to my rest. And the world will be better for this that one man coined and covered with scars Still strong with his last ounce of courage to reach the unreachable Remember that fateful day? My wife Helen and I were heading into Greenpoint for a dentist appointment, and we heard over the radio that a plane had crashed into one of the towers. And at first we thought it was just a horrible accident, and we said, how could such a thing happen on a clear, beautiful day like th that day, and with all the technology that we got? And we didn't realize exactly what had happened until the second plane hit. And then we were completely stunned. I can remember coming into Greenpoint over the Greenpoint Avenue Bridge. And I had a chance to see one of the towers fall. We didn't realize we couldn't go ahead and conceive exactly what had happened. It didn't look real. It looked like some sort of a movie film. But when we did find out what happened, completely, 
And as time eventually told us, we had lost many, many neighbors. In our own little community, we had lost 25 people. We had lost firemen and policemen and young men, the best of our time, in those towers, in the financial towers. We have relatives that had lost relatives. It was a terrible period of time. And I guess we all had somebody that we knew that we lost. In any case, let this day be a day of quiet, dignified, and personal remembrance. For Neighborhoods Today, I'm Dick Mahan. Make sure your heart is right